This summer I went on a dressmaking odyssey and learned a lot and drafted a few patterns, but now it's cold so those dresses aren't going to cut it anymore. I want to make a dress that I can wear in colder weather. I'm thinking a pinafore dress so that I can wear it over top of other things and layer so I can stay warm. Color Mart has kindly sponsored the yarn for this project. Color Mart sells luxury mill ends, that's yarn that's left over from manufacturing, so it's already been oiled to be used in industrial machines, which means it'll feed very nicely through your domestic machines. They have a big selection that's always changing with regular sales and bulk discounts. They're in the UK and they ship internationally. Go check them out and tell them I sent you. Thanks Color Mart! I have one kilogram of this cool grey fingering weight extra fine merino wool. I have some ideas for what I want to make for the dress, but I need to make a bunch of swatches and see how this yarn behaves. Remember, it's been oiled, so it'll bloom or like fluff up after it's been washed and blocked, and it'll behave differently than the swatches that have just come off the machine. I will swatch and then I'll come back when my swatches are blocked and dry. Wait, wait, I forgot to mention there's a link to Color Mart's website in the description. Go check them out. Okay, I'm back with some swatches and this one. We'll get to this. I'm actually really proud of this, but I will have to explain it to you in a bit. Okay, so some of these are just gauge swatches and we will use those to determine what tension I want to use on my machine. This is a really nice yarn. Um, this one was an attempt to try to make like a gathered dirndl, dirndl style thing. I'm not thrilled with it, so I'm probably not going to use this approach. This one was an attempt to add a folded hem to my like short row thing that I do on my gourd skirt pattern, and I did the short rows wrong. Um, don't look at that. <laughs> and it looks like it's going to work, like it's not going to flip up, it's not going to lay weird, so I think that's what I'm going to do. So the gathered dirndl style thing is out because it's not going to give me the kind of fluff that I want. Um, I'm going to work with my gourd skirt pattern instead, and I think I'll probably do either a two gore skirt, which is like A-line, or four gore. I have enough yarn to do four gore. Okay, let me swatch it out of the way. The current plan is to knit the skirt, and then knit the waistband, and we'll get to that in a second. And this might be A-line, or it might be two gore, haven't figured that out yet and then knit like kind of a, a bib apron front thing on the front and then attach straps that loop over to the back and like crisscross. For the bib front thing I made this, which I am super proud of, this is just a test to see if this technique was possible, what I did is I started knitting the waistband and then I took it all off on waist yarn and then I rehung a portion of it and then a portion of the back on waist yarn on my second bed on my river and then knit up and then I'll just close the top with Kitchener stitch and then I rehung the back portion and the rest of the waistband stitches and kept knitting down so I can get this like lovely seamless front piece here and because it's already folded over it's not going to have like weird curly stockinette stuff. So that's what I'm going to do for the bib. And don't worry, I will show you in more detail when we get to that point. For the straps, uh, I'm going to wait until I've knit the whole dress and then measure how long the straps need to be and knit them separately because I am notoriously bad with natural fibers. So I'm going to do my best, but we'll see how this goes. And sometimes in a larger piece, you wind up a little bit off. It'll be okay. Um, instead of attempting buttonholes, which I still have never actually done, I'll get around to them someday. I got these, which are magnetic closures. They are meant for like bags and purses, but I can put a magnet on the back of the strap and then a magnet on the front of the apron front, and then they just clip together. I don't have to worry about making buttonholes. I might like attach this to the back of something and then put a button over top of it so it looks like it's a buttonhole but it's not actually and that way the straps can be completely separate from the rest of the dress i don't have to knit them on and worry about like what length they are and these are also easy to move around if i need to because they'll just be sewn onto the front and not knit into the the stock on it i already have the pattern for the skirt drafted, it's up on my website and it's in pretty good shape. So I'm going to knit the panels for the skirt and then rehang them and do this fun thing with the front and then block the whole thing and figure out what the straps need to be. Let's do this. Oh, and there's a link to the magnetic things in the description. 
I just found these on Amazon. I decided on a four gore skirt. These panels start at the full width of the bed and decrease towards the waist. I'm casting onto waist yarn so I can do a folded hem here. I'm taking off the weights and the cast on comb so I can pick up these live stitches and rehang them on the bed. This goes a lot faster if you can pick up a few stitches at a time. Then I'm rehanging the cast on comb. I'm only going to need it for one row, but I really need it for that one row. I'm bringing one third of the stitches out into hold to short row shape the hem. Then knitting one row. Then bringing the other third out into hold. I'm going to short row out from here. The cast on comb doesn't do much for me now, so I'm pulling off the weights, and I'm going to rehang some only on the parts in work. Now we can short row. This continues until all the needles are back in work. Now we can rehang the cast on comb for the third time. There's got to be an easier way to do this, but I haven't found it yet. Then from here, it's just knitting and decreasing up to the waistband. Don't forget to move the weights up. I'm cutting a long tail so I can use it to sew the side seam later, and then I'm taking this off on waist yarn. There's one finished panel. Now we need four of these. I'm pulling off the waist yarn. And you can see that lovely folded hem. Starting with the back panels, I'm rehanging all of the stitches, making sure to overlap one where the two panels meet. Now this is knit like a regular waistband. I'm cutting a long tail to Kitchener stitch later and taking the whole thing off on waist yarn. There's my waistband. 
Now I'm going to knit the front waistband. This one's a little different. I'm only going to knit half of it and then take the whole thing off on waist yarn. I forgot to leave yarn markers where I want to put the apron front, so I'm adding them now. Just tracing the stitch down to the main color. Now, if I want to knit this seamless apron front, I need waist yarn on the bottom bed. So I'm casting on for one by one ribbing. Knitting in the round, and then bringing the rest of the needles into work. Now I'm transferring all the stitches to the bottom bed. Looking at this now, there were probably easier ways to do this, but this worked for me in the end. Now I can rehang the live stitches for the apron front, just the ones between my markers. I'm going to hang the weights before the bottom bed gets involved. And I don't have quite enough weight, but I can work around that. Now I can do some circular knitting. I'm going slow to make sure there aren't any issues in the first few rows, but I can quickly speed up. Again, leaving a long tail for Kitchener Stitch later, then the whole thing's going to come off on waist yarn. And here's the front piece. Now I'm rehanging all of the unused waistband stitches. And when I get to the apron front portion, I'm picking up the stitches that were on the bottom bed. If you do this right, you should have a pocket facing you. And as usual, this needs some weight. And so now I'm knitting the rest of the waistband. Long tail for Kitchener Stitch later, and cast off on waist yarn. Here we have the seamless apron front. I'm going to start assembly by mattress stitching the center front and center back seams. Here 
Here's my seam. Oh, this skirt is long. Then starting with the back, I'm kitchener stitching the live stitches to the row of knitting just below the waistband. Now the waist yarn can come off. Look at that, seamless. Now I'm Kishner stitching the top of the apron closed. And the waist yarn can come off now. I'm adding a loose whip stitch to the inside of the apron front so that the elastic doesn't try to migrate up there. I also Kitchener stitched the live stitches down to the skirt so we have a fully enclosed waistband. After finishing one of the side seams, I cut a length of elastic a little bit smaller than my skirt waist circumference. Then I threaded it through the waistband with a safety pin. and I zigzagged the ends together on my sewing machine. Then I finished the final seam. Assembly is complete. It's time to block. This is a pretty big piece, but it all fits into this pot. It's going to take a while to fully saturate this thing. I'm adding more wool wash because I wasn't seeing any suds. 
This is very cold water, and I'm being gentle to avoid felting this. I'm washing this a few times. And then I'm rinsing it a few times. I'm not trying to stretch this into any particular shape. I'm just trying to get as much of the water out as I can. This towel is soaked. Time for another one. That's a little better. I wound up pinning out the hem off camera just to make sure that it stayed round. When the dress is dry, it's time to measure for the straps. I'm pinning the front to my shirt so that it stays in place. Then I'm measuring from my back over my shoulder to where I want the strap to go. Let's call that about 30 inches. It's easy to convert that to the number of rows that I need to knit to make a strap. And no try-on is complete without the swish. For the straps, I cast on four stitches on each bed onto waist yarn. Then I'm increasing every two rows until I get to width that I want these straps to be. This is circular knitting, so to knit one complete row means two passes of the carriage. Then it's just so much knitting. For the other end, I'm decreasing every two rows until I get back down to four stitches. And I'm taking it off on waist yarn. Now I'm kitchener stitching the ends closed. Now I can sew the magnetic closures on. I'm putting the heavier half on the dress and the lighter half on the straps. I'm 
I'm weaving in the ends as I go. Now that the straps are blocked, I can add buttons to the ends. These aren't functional, they're just decorative and will help hide the stitching for the magnets. These magnets are sewn on the same way. It's me, my base layers. And I dropped a pen on the floor. So, here's the dress. It's going on over my head. That's the skirt. It's a little wrinkled because I was letting it sit while I blocked the straps. And these are the straps. They are completely separate from the rest of the dress and adjustable if I need to. I can just move the magnetic clasps up and down. And they just click together. Then I can put them back here. Ta-da! <laughs> it's a dress. Yeah, this came out pretty close to what I was looking for. I seem to forget all the time that knits stretch. So the skirt went up a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be. I initially planned for it to be a few inches below my knee, but of course knits stretch and this much skirt gets kind of heavy. So it's a little longer than I was expecting, but that's fine. It's still very wearable. And this is gonna be so comfortable and warm throughout the winter. And like I can layer things under it and then I can put sweaters over it and it'll still be comfortable. This is all I have left of my initial one kilogram of yarn. So it takes about one kilogram to make this kind of dress. Again, a big thanks to Color Mart for sponsoring the yarn for this project. I go through a lot of yarn on this channel and it's great to work with Color Mart on this. Go check them out. There's a link in the description. All right, that's about it. Let me know Let me know in the comments what you think of this dress. Have you ever knit something like this? Would you ever knit something like this? Thanks for watching. Happy knitting. <laughs>